I'm Mr. Graham. Homework help. You get homework help. Let's start. All right, guys. So good to see you here. We have a question before we even begin. We're not even there yet, Mia. You're on page 204, number one through three. Uh, three problems, but each one of them uh, unique, you know, a little bit different, and all having to do with fractions, like we practiced this morning. Let's turn the page. Let's put on the blah, blah, blah timer so that we don't, you know, talk too much. Mia's already jumping to it like she's so excited to put a timer up for some reason. All right. Uh, here's the first two. We'll skip to the third one in just a second. Let's start this timer. Here we go. <clears throat> Solve the problems, okay? If you say so, Mr. Graham. There are six plates on a table. All right. Right away, I'm underlining six because I know it's going to be important. Each plate has half of an apple on it. All right. Right away, I'm going to multiply. Good. Underline half, that's probably important too. Which equation does not show how many whole apples there are all together? Well, first of all, it sure would be great if we knew how to do this ourselves. So how can you figure out how many whole apples there are? You've got six plates, and each one has a half on it. Each one has a half on it. How can we find out how many complete whole apples there are? Yes, Kelly? It's correct. And multiplying a regular number, a whole number, times a fraction is not so bad. You just multiply straight across. Six times one is six. And you keep that two on the bottom, that's all. So we have one thing that's okay right away. Right away you see B is good. They want to know which one's not good. So B, we, you know, we can keep. It is good. They want us to circle the not good one. B is exactly what we just did. We'll keep B. But we still got to figure out what other ones might be incorrect. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I know a shortcut to find the answer. I do, I do. And it has to do with finding the best answer. Six over two. Is that the best answer? How can we find the best answer, Destiny? You can draw a model, correct. So let's draw a model. We're actually going to need three boxes this time. Mr. Grant can see into the future a little bit. Once you get good at this, you'll be able to also. And how many pieces should our models have? It's not hard. It's up there, waiting for you. Giancarlo, tell me. Numeral dose. Dose is correct, two. And how many should we shade? Six. Six, because the numerator is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What did we just make when we shaded those models? Martin? Three holes. You're correct, three holes. One, two, and three, add them all up. Yeah, three holes. So 6 over 2 equals 3. So by doing that, look back at our options. What else is a good one? A. Martin? A. A is a good one. What else is a good one? Think about it. What else is three holes up there? C. Gabriel, yeah? C. C, yeah. 3 over 1 is, is three holes also. If it's over 1, it's still <coughs> over 1. And without an over 1, it's the same thing. So that's good, that's good, that's good, which means the wrong one must be D. And all we did was multiply, find the best answer by drawing models, and we figured it out. Now, I did a lot of work for you on that one. Oh, my goodness. That's like one problem down, Mr. Graham. Aren't you going to leave anything for us to do at home? Of course I am. This next one's super tough. It's going to blow your mind. You're going to be like, this is going to happen. Watch. All right, three, uh, three sections of a fence need to be painted. Each section is made of four equal sized boards. Alex paints one sixth of the fence. Bobby paints twice as much as Alex. Charles paints only one board. David paints the rest. Who paints the largest part? You'd be like, oh my God, what you talking about? 
What you talking about? There's so much stuff going on here. Really? I'm supposed to read that? Relax. Draw it. Take my advice. Use some scratch paper and draw it. What do you mean draw it? Well, exactly what it says. Three sections of a fence. Okay. Draw three sections of a fence. Here we go. There's a fence, right? My imaginary fence. Like a rectangle, whatever. And now I'm going to make three sections. There you go. I drew it. No big deal. That was easy. Oh, it hard. That's one sentence down. Now you don't have to worry about this sentence ever again. Because we drew it. Each section is made of four equal sized boards. So each section has to have four boards. Yes, Isaiah? Go ahead and grab what you need. So each section has four boards. Now look at what Mr. Graham did. Did he give each section four boards? Yeah. I sure did. There you go. Took care of that sentence. This isn't so bad. We just draw a little fence. Not hard. Now here comes the fun part. It's up to you. <clears throat> Alex paints one sixth of the fence. Oh boy. What's one sixth? Of all of this. Hmm. Well, if I paint, if I do one, is that one sixth? No. Maybe if I look at it a different way. Maybe if I make it six. Check this out. It's the same darn fence with the same darn pieces, but if you look carefully, Mr. Graham's looking at it a different way. He's looking at this as one piece, this as one piece, this as one piece. If I keep doing that, how many pieces are there? Six. Six. So if Alex paints one sixth, how much did he paint? He paints two boards, right? I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to leave you there. Because then Bobby paints twice as much as that. Charles paints only one board. And David paints the rest. So who paints the largest part of the fence? And what fraction of the fence was that? What do you think? I already did the hard part for you. I showed you how much Alex painted. Bobby paints twice as much. Charles paints just one board. And David paints whatever's left over after you do all that. So who paints the most? You write the name. What fraction did they paint? Well, that's easy. Just count how many fractions, how many little boards they painted, and tell me what fraction it is. They painted three boards. That's not a fraction. Three out of what? Three out of four? You see four boards here? There's a lot more than that. So you got to figure out that fraction. All right. I have a feeling our blah blah is almost out. Yeah, I only have two minutes left. I better tell you the last problem. I better give you some help on the last problem. But wait, can you? No, it's a video. You can look it up later. <clears throat> you can get everything I just said. You can make, repeat it by pressing play on a video. All right. Emily made this line plot to show the number of pets owned by each of the students in her class. So, number of pets owned. Two kids had zero pets, three kids had one pet, two kids had two, and blah, 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 blah. Looks like nobody had six pets and nobody had seven pets. Somebody actually had eight pets. What the heck? Maybe they're just counting a whole bunch of fish or something, right? It's not that hard to have eight fish. Anyway, what fraction of the students own three or more pets? So who owns three or more pets. What fraction? Well, first, how many people own three or more? You can do that by counting the X's. Destiny? Huh? Five. But five isn't the answer. They asked for a fraction. So it's five out of what? Well, that's how many, but what's the total? What's the total, though? 
Well, it's a little more than five, isn't it? I'm going to let you figure that out on your own, okay? That's an easy one. The only one that might be hard is the first one with you. That last one's the easy one. Here's what you need to spend your time on tonight. This fence thing. Tomorrow morning when I check your homework, if I don't see this drawing, you're in trouble. Because it's a big problem, and you need to draw to get it right. I showed you how to start it. I'm going to put the video on YouTube in case you forget. You need to show me that drawing. Yes, Brianna? As long as I can see it somewhere, I'm happy. Scratch paper or on your book, either way. All right. We talk too much. Everybody say bye, class. Bye.